My name is Liam Henwood Moroni, and I'm an optical systems engineer at GNH. This talk highlights some of our key developments in using photonic technology in space and how they are enabling applications such as satellite communication, remote sensing, exploration, and navigation. Compared to the traditional RF and microwave technology, using photonics in satellite payloads can enable more efficient, compact and lower power consumption systems, ultimately leading to greater cost effectiveness. In photonic based communication systems, the data rates of power efficiency, security and link distances are greatly enhanced. The technology is still developing and improving in terms of performance and qualification levels, as we understand more about the failure modes of photonics in space and adapt our designs and manufacturing processes accordingly. New industrial entrants into the space technology market have also helped to accelerate the penetration of this technology into commercial systems. GNH expertise in the design and development of high reliability components and systems is capitalized to create a portfolio of space compatible products and solutions, exploiting our vertical integration capabilities. These products service three key application areas. The first being satellite laser communications, where we have developed key subsystems of laser terminals, including optical transmitters, amplifiers, and receivers up to TRL9. Remote sensing and exploration is another area where we see various laser sources and components for a range of purposes from LIDAR all the way to spectroscopy. Recently, our Acousto optic tunable filter landed on Mars as part of the SuperCam instrument on the Perseverance rover to analyze organic compounds that could be related to life on Mars. And lastly, we're working on components for the next generation of navigation systems, where lasers can enable ultra accurate clocks to improve the accuracy of position, navigation and timing systems. In the following slides, I'd like to illustrate some of the stages required to qualify the components. These components are critical to most of these applications. So shown here is an example test program for a space qualified DFB laser product. This product was designed and developed at our UK facility in Torquay. The testing was carried out in accordance to the ESCC 23201 guidelines. In the frames of a European Space Agency project, we designed and space qualified high power laser modules. We manufactured 57 devices and took them through a range of functional and environmental tests to confirm their applicability for space. The testing involves step stress, irradiation, shock, vibe, vacuum, temperature and humidity testing. The passive components follow a different path. Proton and gamma radiation in addition to damp heat and thermal vacuum tests are performed to assess the suitability for the space environment. One particular example shown here are passive fibre optic modules containing fused fibre components that were qualified for use in the SMOS Earth Explorer mission to monitor soil moisture and ocean salinity. There's a lot of hype at GNH surrounding our low swap transmitter and receiver amplifiers intended for satellite laser comms. These are fully integrated and digitally controlled devices that operate in the C band and have a miniature or CubeSat form factor. The idea here is to provide an off the shelf solution for high speed communication systems. The approach here has been to take our design knowledge and our expertise from producing data relay systems up to TRL9, shrink everything down and reduce the costs through carefully considering the optimal distribution between off the shelf components and space qualified parts. By using upscreened COTS components, reliability is kept high whilst maintaining the commercial viability and cost effectiveness. The COTS components used are either developed specifically by GNH or have passed through rigorous in house testing and screening. Another exciting area of space photonics is in the quantum optical systems for navigation and sensing. An example of these systems are stable frequency references, locking high performance lasers to atomic transitions. With a known optical frequency, it is possible to perform atom cooling for highly accurate atomic clocks, 
and also to perform sensitive gravitational measurements. GNH have a variety of components and systems suited for laser frequency tuning, shifting and doubling. For instance, on the Jokerus mission, which saw our fibre coupled acousto optic modulator fly on a sounding rocket as part of a successful demonstration of an iodine frequency reference in space. With a lot of exciting activity in space photonics, and plenty of stuff we unfortunately can't tell you about, there are two projects I want to share with you today. Firstly, SmallCat. SmallCat involves GNH delivering a miniaturized gigabit per second transmitter for an in-orbit demonstration of direct-to-earth laser comms next year in 2022. Vertigo, another project, involves developing optical systems for high-power geo-to-ground optical feeder links approaching a one terabit per second throughput. So that concludes our presentation and thank you for taking the time to watch. GNH would be happy to receive you and answer any questions that you may have in our breakout room. Thanks again and have a good day.